What are the biggest mistakes a screenwriter makes on page one? Ooh, mistakes on page one. Um, I think one of the biggest mistakes is jumping into something that's not going to teach us anything. So it doesn't matter to the story, but you think it's cool, <laughs> right? So understanding that those first few pages are about the setup, right? So this is, this is me gathering information about the character, about the world, about, you know, I'm going to start making assumptions about what's going to happen. I'm not looking for the inciting incident on page one, but I am looking for things that are intentional and things that are going to help me understand at least who this character is. So that's why you'll see a lot of action films open with an action scene because you're teaching me the skills that this protagonist has. You're teaching me that they know how to fight, they're usually the good, the good guy, they're usually the winners, or whatever other information that you need me to know. And so now, when the inciting incident does happen, and they say, you're gonna have to go off and save the world, I believe they can do it, because you've already shown me that they can. So I think it's easy on page one to just like open with something that uh, like, you know, we, we call it the opening image, right? And then on, the, on that opening image, we're thinking, okay, let's do something big, let's do something cool. It's like, but if that doesn't have anything to do with your story, or if it doesn't have anything to do with helping to build who your character is, that also should have something to do with the story. Because you can tell me all kinds of things about your character, but if that doesn't matter to the story, then I don't need to know. You might need to know as a writer because it's gonna inform you as you write, but do I need to know as an audience? So I think sometimes we get stuck in a place where we're talking about something that's cool or talking about something that's exciting, but it really has nothing to do with anything. And now you've lost that executive who's only given you 10 pages in the first place because you've just spent the first three pages with two people at a cafe talking about something that's very interesting, but then we never see that person they were just talking to ever again. And whatever it is they were talking about has nothing to do with what our protagonist is about to go and, you know, journey, go on on this journey. Interesting. Why do you think people do that? Why, like, oh, wouldn't this be really cool? We'll open it with this, but it, like you said, it doesn't even, it doesn't tie yeah. back to anything. I think it just goes back to them not understanding screenplay structure. I think we just watch movies, and if you're only watching for entertainment, which is what most people do, that's why people don't like to go to the movies with me or watch TV with me, because I'm not watching for entertainment, <laughs> right? But you know, most people who are watching for entertainment are just taking in the cool stuff, you know? And they're going, oh my God, wasn't it so cool when this opened like that? It's like, yes, but what does that have to do with your screenplay? You know, like, oh, well, you remember in this movie when this happened? So at this point in 2020, we all grew up watching movies, right? So that means, there are movie things that we get attached to, right? So we're not necessarily thinking about story, we're thinking about movie moments, you know? Like that's just a part of like, can you imagine the people who are growing up now? Like movie moments are gonna be their thing. So a lot of the times people are writing screenplays because they're writing what, they, what they've seen already because they think that those are the movie moments that make the film. Instead of realizing that movie moment mattered because of who those characters were and what they were trying to get done. It means absolutely nothing in your screenplay. It means budget <laughs> in your screenplay, <laughs> you know. We recently had a screenwriting teacher tell us that 99% of screenplays are rejected by the industry after the first scene. So is that true in your experience? Yeah, it's, it's, it, again, it's those first 10 or 15 pages. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's the first scene. It depends on who you're sending it to. Um, because most places will say at least give it the 10 pages so that we can say that we did our due diligence, right? Now, you could have a scene that lasts 10 pages, you know, you could have only two or three scenes within those 10 pages. So that's, yeah, totally, it happens. If you, if you can't capture me, if I don't care about your character within these first 10 or 15 pages, if I don't, again, we haven't reached that inciting incident, so I don't even know what this thing is about <laughs> anymore. So now I'm just grasping for straws. I'm reading it, you know. There has to be something that connects me so that I can want to read the rest because people these days will send you a screenplay that's 200 pages long. Who has time for that? If you can't connect me in those first 10 pages, I am not about to spend my next two hours reading 200 pages. It's like for what when there's a whole stack of screenplays here that might capture me within the first five or 10 pages? You know, why do I need to, why do I need to spend my time reading the 200? It's the same thing when you're thinking about television. So a lot of the times people will, you know, have a pilot and now they're thinking of, uh, you know, the, the next couple of episodes and they're like, oh my God, I'm really gonna get you at, at episode five. I've gotta wait five episodes before I'm invested? <laughs> no one's gonna do that. 
If you can't catch me at the pilot, that don't mean as an audience. I mean like as the executives, as the people you're pitching to. The pilot is what sells the series. If you're telling me that you, you're gonna go into this pitch meeting, you're gonna say to them, wait till we get to episode five, then that sounds like episode five to the pilot. <laughs> you know, like you gotta get me in here. And, and because it's 2020, I could be doing this <laughs> while I'm watching, you know, I could be doing all kinds of things. I can have on, what are these things? People put the, uh, like there's Office all kinds of technology right and like I could be looking in a whole nother dimension right now <laughs> instead of, you know, watching your television show or your feature. So, you know, if it's gonna take five episodes before I get there, and I'm not saying it doesn't happen because I will watch things and go, it didn't catch me until episode three, right? But when you're in the room and you're trying to sell it, that pilot is what's going to sell it. Not you saying to them, because like if they're, if you've just pitched your pilot and the people are just kind of like, you're like, wait, 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 I didn't get to tell them about episode five. That's why they didn't buy it. No, 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 no. They didn't buy it because the pilot wasn't interesting or they weren't invested in what was going on. So it's the same thing is true in once they have the script in their hands, because you can also come in and pitch one thing and then you get the script, you're bored to tears. Or you're like, this is not what you pitched. <laughs> you know, you said it was one thing and now I'm looking at the page and it's really this other thing. Sometimes that might be a good thing. Sometimes it may be a bad thing. But simply just because executives are doing a million things. Some of them are not just development executives, but they're also current, program exe current programming executives, which means they're running shows that are on set right now, that are in production right now, that are in writer's rooms right now and they're taking pitch meetings and reading scripts, et cetera. So they're reading scripts from the shows that are already being done. They're reading scripts from people who are coming to pitch. They don't have time to read all 200 pages of your screenplay. They're, and if they do, they're gonna scan it. So they're still not gonna even catch on, catch on to like all of the nuances and all of the everything unless they are that invested because you're, you're you know, grabbing them that way. So that's why those first few pages have to catch them. And it doesn't mean I put an explosion so it caught them. You know, because it's like explosion for what? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it still has to make sense to your story. When you were teaching, you said at Florida State, mm -hmm. um, and you had the students watch movies and then write this, was it almost like they were writing coverage on it, sort of? Um, no, so we would be uh, specifically talking about like analyzing how uh, costuming and makeup may inform what oh, you see, how I lighting see. may inform what. So we would talk about cinematography, we would talk about directing, we would talk about all of the elements of, of the film industry that may be uh, informing what you're seeing on screen. But not the actual screenplay. Not the screenplay. Oh, Literally just what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. So visual. Oh, yes, okay. because people will always say, oh, the writer did a great job. And it's like, well, you don't really know if that moment was something A, that the writer put in there, or if you were feeling that really because of what the light was doing, what the music was doing, <laughs> you know, what the director may have asked for, what the actors are giving you may have nothing to do with the writing. It's like literally a separate thing. So yeah, we didn't study the screenplays at all in this particular class. It was just watching the films and analyzing all of the different elements from production that may be informing the film. What film that you used as one of the examples had the most different responses to it? Hmm, this was more than a decade ago. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so I do not remember okay, all right. at all. I know we used to watch Annie Hall. Okay. <laughs> and we watched Do the Right Thing. Okay. Um, but again, going back to this whole writing thing, if I, if I sat down with the students and had them explain to me what they were seeing, they could do it. Putting it in the written form was an entirely different thing. So. Just, you know, again, going back to everybody might have an idea, but it doesn't make them a writer. Like being able to take what you have here and put it on the page is a skill. And I think we understand that when we're school aged because we're doing it all the time. But then we become adults and we say, I'm a writer. And it's like, yeah, that th it's hard. It's hard to get stuff from here to there. So a lot of their grade was really based on how well they could uh, give me the information in the written form, which is why I was, would focus on thesis statements or even bibliographies. I had a student come to me and say she had never heard of a bibliography, and we, this is an undergraduate course. Oh, okay. I told her that she, you cannot be telling the truth. I would have rather she just said, I forgot to put it in, and then I would have let her go home, put it in, and come back and get a grade. But because she said to me, I, no one's ever told me I had to cite something before, I just could not believe it. I was like, that's just not, <laughs> that cannot be true. So I gave her a zero on the, um, 
Because I told them ahead of time, if you don't cite your sources, you're going to get a zero. If I hadn't told them that, then of course I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> but also I explained to them, getting a zero gives you an opportunity to redo it. If I give you the actual grade, you might get a 50 or a 49 or something because you half did the assignment. That you're not going to be able to change. The zero, you can change. You That's can, fair. You know, yeah. redo it, and now you get a, you know a new grade on it. So they would get the zero and be hurt, and hurt, but they didn't realize the zero is actually helping you. Because mm -hmm. if I actually just grade it for what it is, you, that's not the grade that you want. <laughs> yeah. Wish more places gave zeros that we could redo. Mm -hmm. <laughs>